So this is a Torsen differential model I came up with, and of course the STL files will be made available, and we'll have a closer look at it in a minute. But this is a beautifully elegant device arrangement of gears that performs a differential function. But the differential function can be a little hard to grasp. Now the torsion itself, it's fundamentally a worm gear. These central gears that run to the flanges here are worm gears. These gears here on the outside are just like spur gears. Sure, they're helical, but they're spur gears. Now, a worm gear can't be back-driven. What that means is, if I have a worm on a spur gear and I turn the worm gear, the spur gear will turn. But if I turn the spur gear, it won't turn the worm gear, and that locks everything up. So if these try to turn, it will lock against the worm gear that's at the central of here and lock it. So if I apply power down the shaft there, of course the whole thing then moves. It's actually trying to move the carriage, but the carriage is locked against the worm gears, so it ends up moving these flanges and, hey presto, your wheel. Which is great, I mean, you know, that's easy. Apply power, both wheels turn. But a differential action is where one has to turn at a different rate to the other, and if they're locking, then how does it achieve that? Well. It achieves that on two basic principles. The first one is that all motion, and therefore all force applied, is relative. I mean, if you stand on a train station, the train will zip past you. If you're standing on a train, then the station will zip past you. And okay, you may say, yeah, oh, that's just a point of view. But think about the Earth. If you're standing on the street and a car is driving towards you, it apparently comes towards you. If you change your point of observation and you're out in space, you have to remember that the Earth is turning at something like a thousand kilometers an hour at the equator. If you watch that same person and that same car, what you'll see is both of them moving away from you. But because the car is moving towards the person on the street, it will be that the car is moving away from you slightly less slow than the person. So, it all depends where you are to what that movement actually is. And the second thing that's kind of hard to grasp is that we always think of differentials as being in cars, and that's because that's singularly the greatest use of them. A differential in a car is where power is split, so the power comes down one axle and it's split between the two axles. But differentials operate in the other way. They will also combine power. So if power is put on these two separate axles from two separate inputs, they will combine to give power on the output shaft. Okay, there's the concept. Now have a let's have a better look at this model. Here is the model I came up with in Tinkercad of the torsion differential. If we remove the extraneous gubbins, that is the drive system, the flanges and the frame, we can get a better look at the heart of the machine. And that's really all there is to it. The machine itself is composed of two identical halves. We separate those halves out, turn one round, then we can see that there's a central sun gear, which is a helical gear, surrounded by three other helical gears. Those helical gears just spread the load. It would work just as well. If there were only one, there'd just be a lot of load on it. Okay, let's remove the circlips and the pins. The helical gears then come out, and if we bring that helic helical gear out here, what we'll notice is it's actually made of two parts. It's this section here, and then there's a spur gear attached on each end. The job of those spur gears is to synchronize the two halves. Of course, we then have the carriage, which holds everything in registration, and right in the center is a shaft with what I'm calling the sun gear. Now, that might look like a helical gear, but actually in profile and the way it operates is that operates as a worm gear and these operate as spur gears when it comes to the function of the mechanism. Okay, fascinating, let's print it and build it. Okay, you should have two of them. Two of them, which are calling the sun gears. Six of these, six of these, six of these, six of these little circlips and two of these little spacers. Now you start by gluing that on the top in a nice centre. 
I use the pin to centre it up, spot of glue, and then that will hold itself together. I did try printing these in one piece, but it made such a mess of the actual teeth. I just found it easier to print two pieces and glue them together. When you glue them together, they go in there, the pin goes through, the clip goes on the end to hold it, and you repeat that three times. The sun gear gets this spacer on the bottom and then feeds through the centre like that, and you'll make two sets of these. On one of them, glue the large bevel gear. And when you've made two of them, line them up and stick them together, like that, and then drop them in the frame. Then we take these two end flanges and these two clips, and one clip goes on there, the other one goes on the other side, and then the end flange gets glued on like that. Then when we've done that, we can pop the drive handle on. This, of course, would be where the power comes from the engine. You take, whoops, <laughs> you take that bit, and stick it in there with that section facing upwards. That then rests in there. This clip goes on the top there. Glue it in place and finally the handle goes on there. And there it is, all finished. Now if I rotate the handle, rotate that bevel gear, it'll drive that bevel gear which drives this cage. And of course that's exactly what the engine does. And of course when I rotate it, this whole unit turns as one. But if I don't use that handle, if I use the wheels here and rotate them in opposite directions, you'll see that it still turns. But one important thing to notice as I do that, these two turn in opposite directions. They're both turning that way. So notice that as I do that, then those gears rotate in opposite directions. If I were to rotate them in the same direction, which is effectively what I do with the handle, the whole system locks, and when it locks, it turns this whole thing. Okay, so we're going in a straight line. Power's coming down from the engine through that axle. This turns the carriage, locks that worm gear, which is what the sun gears are, and the wheels turn. Now when we turn a corner, of course, one wheel is turning faster than the other, and we need to change our point of view. Instead of standing on the axle and looking at everything turning, we need to stand on the slower wheel. If we stand on the slower wheel, to us, the slower wheel is still, it's not moving at all. The other wheel is moving in relation to the slower wheel, so it's still moving forward. And of course, it's tied together because of the spur gears, and that means now the drive axle with the wheels on it are actually turning and inputting into the system, which unlocks the system. One of the beauties of the spur gears is it averages everything out. Because the spur gears are making everything turn, then that extra bit that it adds averages between the two axle wheels that are being turned. So if one is turning 20% faster, the other will be turning 20% slower. So it evens out the differential. Now if we get stuck and one wheel isn't moving at all from the point of view of the axles this time, again the system becomes locked because the only input power is from that drive axle from the main engine and that transmits torque into the stuck wheel instead of letting the torque all go down to the wheel that slips and so you don't get the same slippage problem that you would with other types of differential. And it is one of the reasons that I think this is an elegant and beautiful design because it takes account of all of that stuff in an arrangement of basically three gears, a spur gear and two helical gears, one acting as a worm. That's really quite clever. Anyway, I will put these things on um, Thingiverse, of course, should somebody want to have a look, better look at that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.